Good afternoon, people. Welcome to another episode of Adam's Eats. How are we doing? I'm well. Hope you're well. Now, I've got a question for you. What's smoother than a tiger in a tuxedo? My mashed potato. My mashed potato. It's called a potato writer. And basically, it's just a machine contraption thing. You plonk your potato in there, you press it through, it comes out of these holes, and you get super smooth mash. Uh, invest in a good one, it'll last you a lifetime, but you will get super smooth mashed potato every single time for all the restaurants to use. The other tip I'm gonna share with you as well is the potato that you use. Now, there's various different potatoes out there that you can use, but getting the right potato will make a big difference as to how your mash turns out. Now, I use the good old fashioned Maris Piper, Okay, it's reliable, it's cheap, it's everywhere, and it just gives you a nice smooth mash, gives you a nice flavor, and it doesn't get too waterlogged. Some of these cheap naff kind of potatoes that you can get, you know the ones in the supermarkets that just say white potatoes, all right? I, they're, they're a mixture of all sorts of different varieties, but they just kind of get really waterlogged and your, your mash is just naff. So Maris Piper is a good potato to use. Another tip I'm gonna share with you as well is white pepper, all right? Forget black pepper. As nice as it is, um, I just find that with white pepper you get such a nicer flavour and it just works well with mashed potato. And also keeps it nice and white, okay? So if you're just making plain mashed potato, uh, you don't want like flecks of black in there, you want nice kind of consistent colour, so that helps with that as well. Okay, and another tip, egg yolks. All right, I'm not going to tip these four too much because they will fall out, um, but that's what I use in my mash, okay? With butter as well. Um, what I do is just once the mashed potato has gone through the ricer, I mix in the butter, salt, pepper, that kind of stuff, and then I'll just mix in a couple of egg yolks in at the last minute because that just adds an extra layer of richness. And also, if you're making it for a topping for say like a fish pie or something like that, cottage pie, by adding the egg yolks, when you put it under the grill, put it in the oven, you'll get extra crispiness because that egg yolk will brown nice as well. So that's another little tip for you. Final tip for you is this. Plenty of this, yes, butter, all right? Just forget olive oil, stop putting olive oil in mashed potato. I don't know why people do it. Well, I do know why people do it, right? Because obviously trying to wash their health or whatever. But if that's the case, don't have mashed potato, right? Because it's got to have butter in it. Have a salad instead, okay? It's not a slimming dish. It's full of all sorts of naughty stuff, but hey, it's nearly Christmas and so what, right? We only live once. Okay, so that's kind of my little few tips, really. Four tips for you on how to get the perfect mash. Um, I will put this in the Sunday roast playlist as well. So check that out as well, because I've got all sorts of dishes on there. So you can mix and match, make up your own kind of roast dinner. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we'll crack on and we'll simmer our potatoes and get them nice and cooked. Okay, so as you can see, all I've done is I've peeled my potatoes and I've chopped them all in half. Um, I just rinsed them under the tap before I put them in the pan. Just gets rid of any excess kind of starch and muck on the potatoes. So give them a bit of a rinse, pop them in the pan with some water. A few twists of salt and I put it on a nice medium heat and I just want to bring that up to the boil um, and then turn it down to a nice simmer for about 10-15 minutes until the potatoes are nice and tender. Might take a bit longer, depends on obviously how thick you've cut your potatoes. Okay, so bring those to the boil, we'll simmer them, get them nice and cooked and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've had my potatoes on the boil now for about sort of 15 minutes or so. Just want to get a spoon in there, just lift one out. Okay, and you just want to test it with the point of the knife. It goes in with ease, they're ready to drain. Okay, so once you've drained your potatoes, you just want to start passing it through the ricer and just load a couple of potatoes into the ricer press it down and out comes mashed potato okay so repeat that with all of your potatoes until you've got a nice fine mash and then we'll add the butter okay so once you put all your potatoes through your ricer it should end up with a nice big pile of mashed potato like so and um, i recommend putting it back into the pan that you cook your potatoes in because obviously there's still some heat in there to help keep it warm and then you just want to start adding your butter now I've cubed this butter and it's at room temperature because that helps it melt easier through the potato and just start working that butter in just a bit at a time okay you should see it start to melt through the mashed potato and just keep working it a few more cubes of butter okay you just want to repeat that until all of your butter is used up completely melted and you've got a nice smooth mash now add your egg yolks pop them straight in come out now they'll cook through uh, in the residual heat as well so just get them mixed through now add your white pepper mix that through okay and then at this point you just want to taste it and before you add any salt okay because depending on what butter you use um, will depend on how much salt in it uh, so just give it a bit of a taste that could do with just a little bit of salt 
And that, folks, is your basic mashed potato. How easy is that? Velvety smooth, really, really soft. And that's it, that is ready to go. Serve it with your dinner, put it with your roast chicken, roast beef, roast pork, whatever it is you're making. I'm gonna split this mixture into three, normal standard mashed potato, and then I'm gonna show you just a couple of other ways that you can just change it and make it a whole new thing. Okay, so what I've done, just to illustrate the versatility of the mashed potato, um, I've just taken two separate portions of it, and I'm just gonna show you what you can do to kind of make it a little bit different and to just kind of jazz things up a bit. All right, there's no measurements here. This is just to merely highlight to you different things that you can do with it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this first one is I'm gonna go in with a bit of lemon zest, okay? A little bit of lemon juice, probably about juice of half a lemon, some freshly chopped parsley, and some grated Parmesan cheese. Like I say, eyeball it, all right? It all depends on how much mash you're making as to what you'll need. So just give that another mix, taste, check for seasoning. Mm. That is so good. And what that lemon does, it just lifts it completely and um, it cuts through the richness and that would be absolutely fantastic served with some grilled fish, uh, some chicken breasts uh, or something like that. It won't really work with a roast dinner because you don't want kind of lemon juice and gravy. And it just shows you a nice little twist on it and what different things that you can do with it. Okay, in the next one, I'm just gonna go in with some smoked bacon. All I've done here is I've taken about four rashes of bacon. I've just sliced them up, fried them off in the pan so nice and crisp. I'm just gonna scatter a few in there like so. And I've got some finely diced spring onions or scallions, I think they call them in America, or green onions. Just gonna go in with a few of those as well. Mix that through, a bit more bacon, because like everyone loves bacon, don't they? There we go, let's have a taste of that one. Amazing. Again, it's just transformed it into something completely different. You've got that nice hit of the smoked bacon running through it, and you get that nice oniony hum from the spring onions. And that, again, would go nice with a sort of grilled fish, but really well with a steak, actually. I think a nice charred flame grilled steak, some of this, and a bit of side salad, and it'd be absolutely delicious. So, again, just a completely different experience, another flavour, all from the same mashed potato. Um, and as you can see, got the nice one with the bacon and the spring onion. And then that brilliant Italian vibe there as well with the parsley, parmesan and lemon. So yeah, trio of mashed potato, done. Well, I think that's pretty easy, don't you think? Mashed potato, again, just follow those simple tips that I gave you and also invest in a potato rice. So that's the key to getting smooth mash is getting one of those. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out one that I think is gonna be suitable. Um, and that's it for today, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you like my videos. I'll put all my social media links in the description below as usual. See you guys next time and bye for now.